click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends i welcome you all to this video here we are with the chapter for microwave engineering addressing the propagation of microwaves inside the rectangular waveguides initially in this chapter we have first of all analyze what exactly the parallel plate waveguide is it is also one of the transmission line then we have seen the understanding the details with respect to the rectangular waveguide which is a hollow metallic tube there through which the microwave is supposed to propagate as we have seen that the microwave propagation cannot be there with the ideal type of transverse electromagnetic tem mode hence we have analyzed the tem mode and then the tm mode is also there so based on to the understanding so far let us have the problem for the t mode of operation into the rectangular waveguide so here we are provided with a problem statement the problem statement is an air filled rectangular waveguide of inside dimensions 7 into 3.5 cm operates in the dominant te10 mode in the part a we are asked to find the cutoff frequency in the part b to determine the phase velocity of the wave in the guide at the frequency of 3.5 gigahertz and in the part c to determine the guided wavelength at the same frequency here so very first of all as the dimensions are provided to us we shall be drawing a simple schematic to understand the situation given into the problem so here we consider the three axes those are mutually perpendicular to each other so here we take x axis y axis the positive ends and this one to be the z axis so as we have been provided the inner dimensions of the cross section here so here we have such a type of cross section and this is along the length of the waveguide i can see so for the x axis y axis and z axis intersecting into the origin o we have 7 cm along x dimension now we have 3.5 cm along y dimensions as specified into the problem statement here and we consider the direction of propagation of microwave in this particular direction now we get back to the problem statement so in such a rectangular waveguide here we have the inner material medium to be filled by air so for air we have epsilon to be epsilon 0 the constant value mu to be mu 0 the constant value so now after air filling we have the mode of propagation of microwave to be of dominant type transverse electric having the coefficients 1 0 for the m and n in general i can say now let us have determination of the cutoff frequency now for determination of cutoff frequency for part a we represent cutoff frequency fc is equal to the formulation here we have c divided by twice a where c is nothing but 1 upon square root of mu 0 epsilon 0 which is nothing but the velocity of light into the vacuum or free space we can say it is 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 meters per second whereas small a is the broader dimension of the cross sectional view of the waveguide here so in the numerator to determine the cutoff frequency we put 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 meter per second in the denominator 2 as it is and the broader dimension is it is 7 cm so to be converted into meters we get 7 into 10 to the power minus 2 here so this simple calculation by the next step gives us the cutoff frequency is equal to 2.14 into 10 to the power 9 here as this is frequency we get it measured in terms of hertz here 
we can get the multiplicand 10 raise to power 9 in terms of giga. So, therefore, expressing the cutoff frequency Fc is equal to 2.14 gigahertz here. So, here I outline the value of cutoff frequency. So, getting back to the problem statement, now we are finished in determination of the cutoff frequency for part A. In the part B, we require to determine the phase velocity of the wave in the guide at the frequency of 3.5 gigahertz here. So, the phase velocity of the wave in the guide can be simply represented as V suffix G. So, the V suffix G for part B can be determined by making the use of formula where we have the numerator by C and the denominator by the square root of 1 minus we have Fc minus F squared here. So, as we know that C is equal to 3 into 10 raise to power 8, the substitution in the numerator. In the denominator, we have square root 1 minus Fc is the cutoff frequency. So, the answer of cutoff frequency just now we have determined into the part A. So, that it is 2.14. Whereas, small f is the operating frequency given into the problem statement of part B that it is to be used 3.5 gigahertz. So, 2.14 divided by 3.5 which is to be squared. So, we have substituted all the values and this gives the value of Vg to the step. Here we have 3.78 into 10 raise to power 8. So, in the SI system of measurement, we put the unit meters per second here. So, I outline this particular answer. So, getting back to the problem statement. Now, in the part C, we require to determine the guided wavelength at the same frequency value. So, the guided wavelength can be represented as lambda suffix g here. Now, the determination of lambda suffix g can be made with the help of formula lambda g in terms of lambda suffix 0 divided by under root of here we have 1 minus fc by f bracket squared here. So, fc by f we have calculated into the previous part B also. Now, lambda 0 is nothing but C divided by F here. So, here we get the formula expressed as C by F divided by square root of 1 minus Fc by F squared here. So, in the next step, we substitute 3 into 10 raise to the power 8 divided by here we have 3.5 into 10 raise to power 9 in place of f and this is all divided by here we have square root of 1 minus. So, 2.14 divided by here we have 3.5. So, 10 raise to the power 9 have been both cancelled for the fc and that of the f here. So, this is to be squared. So, this particular computation leads to the value of lambda suffix g is equal to here we obtain 10.8 into 10 raise to the power minus 2. So, lambda originally it is a measurement of length dimension. So, to be measured in terms of meters or we can also express it as lambda g is equal to 10.8 centimeters. So, this is the required answer for part C we have outlined here. So, here for the given dimensions and the operating mode of the rectangular waveguide, the microwave propagation we have considered and we have solved for the answers of cutoff frequency, the phase velocity and that of the guided wavelength lambda g for the situation here. By the next lecture, we shall be having a practice of one more problem based on to the transverse electric mode of propagation in the rectangular waveguide. I hope you are definitely enjoying learning with the microwave engineering subject. For more information, the details of various concepts and the practice of these problems, you can subscribe to EKEDA channel. Thank you.